what's going on guys welcome to fresh pineapples i'm sarah i'm zach and we're starting the lifestyle early in life this show is not for children if you're under the age of 18 then fuck off what's going on guys welcome back to fresh pineapples today is episode 11 we are very excited to be bringing this here to you today from the comfort of our own home, in the comfort of our couch. Why do you sound like a newscaster? And the weather today is going to be slightly <laughs> fuck Sarah <laughs> with a chance of fuck off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, what were you saying? I don't know. I, I lost my honestly forgot to. Yeah. All right, well, let's restart. This is episode 11. Episode 11. And we will be talking about open relationships, kind of going over it. Not necessarily a how-to, but more of just talking about it, what it is, our experiences. The difference between having an open relationship and just being swingers. Mm Mm-hmm. And we also have a couple fresh forms. And we don't have a fucking fresh update because we were supposed to hang out with a couple on Friday night, and of course, they rain checked us. Boo. What? Like, it is so frustrating that we started this podcast to, like, you know, document our new journey, kind of. And so far, we've done barely anything. And it's frustrating and irritating. But at the same time, You know, that's what it is. Being in the lifestyle isn't necessarily always easy. Sometimes you got to deal with all the rescheduling, finding a couple who's even worth meeting and all of that. That's a good point. That's definitely true. It's not all, you know, glamour and fun times every single time, you know. There's effort that goes into it and it doesn't always work out. And that's okay, you know, because... It just means when it does work out, it's that much more worth it. Yeah. And this last time wasn't our fault, so. Yeah. It's just kind of, like, annoying because I swear, like, most of the other podcasts, it's just. They just do shit, like, every week. Yeah, like, we met this couple and did this, and they were wonderful, and I don't know how they're so lucky. That has not been our experience so far. Yeah. But, yeah, so no fresh update. But we will be hanging out with a couple in two days' time. Yes, we're recording on Monday the 20th, and we're meeting them on Wednesday, hopefully. Yeah, as long as they don't rain check us again. Yeah. Now, we have a fresh question. From one of our fresh fans. Today's fresh question comes from Derek, and he's from California. Quick shout out to Derek. He was actually our first fresh fan in the group, and he was our first extra fresh fan whenever that still existed. And he was our first OnlyFans subscriber, so thank you, Derek. So Derek's question is, if there was a magic pill that lets you get rid of your mental illness... Would you take it? He says, I have bipolar 2, depression, anxiety, and I personally would not. It made me who I am today. Wow. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. And I like your perspective on it. I like your answer. I like that you're fucked in the head, too. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a tough question, I'd say. It is a tough question because, you know, it does make you who you are today. Sure. But I don't know. It's like, has all that suffering been worth it? And the suffering that's going to continue? I mean, it's on and off, but... That's very sad. What you're saying is tragic. Well, it's true. I mean, that's one way to look at it. But it also has made you much more understanding, more empathetic, more loving. It's really made you, like, a better person. Because you've gone through those things. That's true. But it made me gain weight. (laughs) I think it's hard because 
it has made us who we are today. And I think we're very proud of how far we've come. And we both have been kind of in the depths of mental illness. And we both have risen up from it. And that rise up really teaches you a lot and really shapes you and who you are. But at the same time, the grass is always greener on the other side. I don't know how much of my mental fortitude I would have had I not had these mental illnesses. So I would be interested to see who I would be if I wouldn't have any mental illnesses at all. So I think I would take the pill. I would do it because it would be very nice to not have to deal with what we deal with. I agree with most of what you said about like it making you better and have more qualities and stuff. But honestly, I wouldn't take it because it's what made us connect so well. It's what not what brought us together, but what made us perfect for each other, honestly. The stuff we've been through and how it changed us as people. It made us just align so well together. Because it changed us a lot. It changed our outlooks on life. It changes. It was a big part with me not being non monogamous. I think it really is what makes our relationship so great. Well, yeah. parts of it. Yeah. I mean, it's also what makes our relationship so tough sometimes, you know? I know. Yeah. And it's not like we like argue about stuff like that. It's just whenever one person's down in the dumps, the other one really has to put on their bootstraps and help them out, you know? And that's always tough. Yeah. But I see what you're saying. But it's worth it. Oh, of course it's worth it. Wouldn't want to do with anyone else. So you would take the pill? I would take the pill, yeah. Well, if you take the pill, I'm taking the pill. You don't have to take the pill because I take the pill. Well, my shit was all about how it made us good for each other. So if you're not that person, I'm not going to be this fucked up person myself. It doesn't mean I would leave you if I had the pill. Maybe I would. I don't know. (laughs) I'm just kidding. All right. We're talking about this for too long. I know. Yeah. We're going off on a tangent. Thank you, Derek, for your question. We certainly appreciate it. It was, uh, gave us some good thought. I agree. Okay. I realize that every week we kind of naturally have just given a recommendation or like a shout out to something because why not? We like to try new things. Yeah. And recently I tried, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it's called Liquid IV. And it's a hydration packet that you like pour in your water. And oh my gosh, it hydrates you so much. Like it works so well. I was surprised. I really love it. I mean, the taste is okay, but I'm someone who naturally gets dehydrated easily. So it's been a lifesaver. So I would say definitely great for a hangover or to even prepare to go out for a night. Get you all hydrated and ready to get wet. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, I tried it too. I gotta be honest, I didn't really like the flavor. But I get like the practical use of it. I think that that's really good. There's other flavors. Oh, really? Yeah. There's not just dog shit flavor? All right. Don't trash on my shout out, okay? I'm sorry, I just didn't like it. Anyways, also real quick, I wanted to mention that on the website, we have two new pages, and one of them is our fresh guest page. So all of the people we have on our show, the people we interview and whatever, they are on there. And you can see a picture of them, as long as they allow it, of course. So, anytime we have a guest on, you can go look and see what they look like. And then there's another page that's just, anytime we go on another podcast, we'll post that there, which we've only been on one other one, the Sex and Mex podcast, so not much to see there yet, but... Yeah, definitely go check that out, Sex with My Ex. It's episode 11 of theirs that we were on, and it's really entertaining, actually, so... Highly recommend. They do a good job with their podcasts. Much better than ours. Yeah, by far. Plus they have cool accents. We just sound like idiots. 
Well, one of us does. True. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we start, I just want to say that so far podcasting has been fun and stuff, but there's things that are so frustrating because you make these episodes and you put them out there and then anyone who creates a podcast will tell you, you know, you start out with one idea, an idea of what it's going to be and then it kind of shifts and changes They'll try out a segment and it doesn't work or add new things, which we've been on that path. And I just want to say it's it's so like frustrating to me that we have five episodes talking about stuff that doesn't even exist anymore. And we're only 11 episodes in. What do you mean? The Extra Fresh Fans group and when I made like the Only Fresh Fans thing. Yeah, but that's not what the episodes were entirely about well not entirely about but mentioning it and like saying to go join it and stuff yeah so people listen and be like okay i'll join and they're like what the fuck where is it yeah exactly yeah i just wanted to share that if we talk about something and you're not listening to these episodes as we're posting them sorry if stuff doesn't exist anymore (laughs) we're doing our fucking best here okay we're trying. But yeah. I think that's all we want to talk about. Anything that you want to say? Um, yeah. So, we've noticed how our downloads have kind of plateaued lately. Like, they were on a steady rise for a good while. And then lately, they've kind of plateaued. So Which we knew was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's natural. So, like, the total engagement has kind of fell off a little bit, but... I just want to say, like, you know, that only motivates me even more. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes me want to go full-fledged, put more effort into it, and do whatever we can to increase engagement, you know? Yeah, I feel the same. Like, I've been slacking on Twitter, like, never posting, trying to reach new people, or yeah, stuff like that that I should be doing. Yeah, I th- I think that we've like we've gotten a little bit comfortable with it, and I think we need to kind of ramp it up a little bit. And- yeah, well, it also had to do with as I've said before, um, that new, the exciting new or starting a podcast like wore off the honeymoon phase. Yeah, the honeymoon phase. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I kind of started slacking. Yeah. But honestly, the best way. For us to grow is by word of mouth. Yep. So if you listen and you like our show, you know, tell your swinger friends. Let them know. Tell your regular friends, honestly. I mean, at the end of the day, Okay, it's... but what if they, their friends don't know they're swingers? Well, you don't have to be a swinger to listen to our podcast. That's true. But I just wanted to say that, you know, we have no intentions of slowing down and we're only going to get better. And every episode we do, we learn from our past mistakes and we improve every single time, I think. And I think it's only going to get better from here. And if you do want to support us, which is amazing, thank you so much. But if you do want to support us, the best way to do it is honestly just tell a friend. Just tell anybody that you know that might be interested in listening to our podcast about us. And that's like the best way you can support us, honestly. Yeah, especially your swinger friends. Or... If you're meeting a new couple or talking to a new couple and you're like, what do I say? Like, do you listen to Swinger Podcasts? And they're like, yeah, I do. And be like, do you listen to Fresh Pineapples? And they might say no. And you can say, oh, you should go listen. Or if they say, yeah, we do. Be like, us too. Aren't they fucking great? Jesus. You've had this all planned out in your head, huh? Actually, yes, I've been thinking that. Oh, my God. (laughs) You're such a dork. I think about stuff constantly. My brain's overactive, okay? I know. Anyways, I just want to say that. So thank you so much to everyone who's been sticking sticking with us and helping us out and supporting us. We, uh, we're very grateful and very... We love y'all. We do. Okay. Okay. Let's get to the episode. Let's do it. So, 
full disclosure, we actually recorded the beginning of the episode like a week ago because we had to stop after that. And yeah, it's been a whole week. Whole fucking week. We have been slacking. No, we've just been busy. Yeah, we've actually been really busy. We've been doing kind of a lot lately. Yeah, and we got an Xbox, so... <laughs> I mean, come on. Minecraft isn't going to play itself. <laughs> but, yeah, so we kind of want to apologize. It's been three weeks since our last episode. God, has it been three weeks? I know. Oh, we're horrible. We're just letting them down. I know, especially after we just said in the beginning of the episode, like, we're going to do better, and we're going to be better, and we're going to try harder. Oh, and in the beginning... We said we didn't have a fresh update. Well, we did end up meeting that couple, so we do have a little one. Small fresh update. Yeah. That we'll get into at the end. Now let's get into open relationships. Now, this is the lifestyle topic that we actually have experience to talk about. So, we're pretty excited to share about open relationships, about ours, what they are... There might be some misconceptions with people thinking they might be one thing whenever they're really not. But also, everyone's different. You know, so our open relationship might look a little bit differently than someone else's. Yeah, it's a spectrum. Everything in the lifestyle, I feel like, is a spectrum. Yeah. We're using the term open relationships, which you can also say an open marriage. And also, some people call it a hall pass. I don't really like that phrase. I, don't, I feel like hall pass insinuates that it's temporary. Like a one time. Yeah. You're going on your bachelor party. Right. Here's your hall pass. Which, yeah. if that's what you do, I mean, shout out to you. That's kind of cool. I don't. I just don't like the phrase. If you use it, sorry, but I just don't like it. <laughs> and this is something also that you can do instead of swinging. It can be separate, or it can be something that you add. To your swinging lifestyle. You can do both. Like me and Zach decided to do. Mm -hmm. So for some couples, it might be better doing both. Some couples, maybe an open relationship would be better than swinging. It just depends on your relationship and what you want. Your own personal boundaries and feelings and things of that nature. So what is an open relationship? Define it in your own words. In my own words, I would say an open relationship is where you are committed to one person, but you have the freedom to be with other people, whether it be romantically or just sexually or anything in between. So you can go off and have other partners, but at the end of the day, generally you go back to your one main person. Now, it's a little bit different than what America knows as polygamy, I would say, because polygamy means having like multiple partners at once, romantically having multiple partners at once. And generally, it's like having multiple wives or multiple husbands. So that's a little bit different than having just an open relationship or an open marriage where you love one person, but you're kind of just you go off and have little flings on the side. To define it in short terms, you have a relationship, you can go fuck someone, and then you come back to your relationship. Yeah, but that's not (laughs) all it could be. (laughs) Like, some open relationships, they go and they can have, like, little girlfriends or boyfriends. Yeah, little side pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So, for me and Sarah, for example, we are very in love with each other and very committed to each other but we're able to go off and have sex with basically whoever we want the thing that we're not interested in is emotional connections with other people we don't want to get involved romantically with other people just because we feel like we're enough for each other emotionally yeah and i feel like i've said this before on another episode but i couldn't imagine us doing that because it just wouldn't compare Yeah, I feel like they couldn't compete with what we have. Yeah. Like, I'm down to feel lust with people, but anything more than that, I get enough from you. Aww. Sometimes. (laughs) 
So that's basically what an open relationship is and the different types you can have. I wanted to read a statistic I got from psychalive.org. About 4-5% to of heterosexual couples have agreed to have an open relationship. That may seem like a relatively small number, but take into consideration that more than 20% of married men and nearly 15% of married women admit to infidelity. And those are only admitted affairs. There's other studies that show even between 30 and 60% of married individuals will engage in adultery at some point in their marriage. That's a pretty high number, 30 to 60. It's also a very wide range. Yeah, it's a very wide range, but... <laughs> it's, it, it's hard to test these numbers because people don't admit it. Right. So probably somewhere around like 45% or so, which is like a high number, but honestly not that surprising. Yeah. So to wrap it up, while only 4 to 5% of men and women are choosing to be open about their extramarital relations, somewhere between 15 and 60% are opting for a less consensual form of infidelity. So basically, open relationships are kind of seen as bad in some people's eyes or, you know, whatever, stigma. But really, there's so many people doing it in a way that's just not consensual. Right. That's the horrible way to go about it. It's sad that so many people just result to cheating whenever there's this other option out there that could be really beneficial to their relationship. Yeah. And it, like, being cheated on fucking sucks. Like, I've been cheated on, you've been cheated on. Yeah. And it's, like, the worst feeling ever. You just feel so inadequate and so worthless. And that can all be solved if you just talk to your partner about what you're wanting and, like, how you're feeling and what options there are, because there's always options. Yeah, there's multiple options, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's something that, in the future, cheating in a marriage will go down more as the younger generations become more open with their sexuality and all of that kind of stuff that we've talked about before. I think that will lessen cheating. I mean, cheating will always be there, unfortunately, but... I think those numbers will go down, do you agree? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, if more people like us spread awareness to the younger generations and... That's why we're here. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. So, for anybody interested in beginning an open relationship or opening their relationship, um, we thought that we would give some general guidelines for you whenever you're starting out. First and foremost, be honest about your intentions and why you want an open relationship. How is it going to benefit you? How is it going to benefit your partner? How is it going to benefit you guys as a couple? Yeah, you need to be clear and honest about it too. Because if you just come to your partner and be like, hey, I want an open relationship, what do you think? Like, no. You can go to your partner and explain the reasons why. Not just throw it out there and see what happens. Right. And honesty is the most important thing. I mean, you have to be honest with your partner about how you feel and what you want. Yeah, and it's important not to make them feel inadequate, too. For sure, for sure. Like they're not satisfying you. Yeah, and while you're talking to them, just explain what your expectations are. What do you want to happen? What do you expect to happen? Ask your partner what they want to happen. Right. Because it's not just about you at the end of the day. If you want an open relationship, both sides have to agree and both sides have to create rules and boundaries. That's definitely something good to bring up as you're bringing up an open relationship to your partner. And after y'all talk about it, and if you agree to do it, then definitely in detail go over your expectations and your rules and boundaries. Yeah, we can't stress that enough. Rules and boundaries are very important. Even if you think that you don't have any, just everything that could come up, you have to talk about it and make sure your partner's okay with it, make sure you're okay with it. And I've we've talked to some couples where they just kind of dive right in, as we've seen on our fresh forums. <laughs> but generally, whenever people do that, they just kind of feel out how they feel about certain situations and things that happen. But we find it's best just to talk about it beforehand and 
Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong, especially saying you're hard nose. Right. Like, you're using protection no matter what. Right. Those kind of things. That's an example, yeah. The more detailed stuff, kind of, sometimes you do have to figure out as you go, because you just don't think of things. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Same with swinging. Right, exactly. So once you've done all that, and let's say your partner and you agree to an open relationship, follow those rules. I mean, they're there for a reason. They protect you and your feelings, and they protect your partner's feelings. And the last thing you want to do is break their trust. So just follow the rules, and even if it's something that you might not agree with, if it's your partner's rule, then... You know, you still should follow the rule because at the end of the day, if it's your partner's rule, then it's your relationship's rule. And we keep throwing the word rule out, but honestly, it's not like there's like a list of rules that people go through, I would imagine. I mean, for me and Sarah, we have like two or three rules. Yeah, some people look at rules or guidelines and these different words in different ways. Like some people will see rules as hard no's, like you cannot do this or whatever. And guidelines are kind of, you know... Suggestions. Suggestions or just more of a lenient thing. Or boundaries, like, the same thing, too. It's not a hard no, but in certain circumstances, then you can do it. It's not as cut and dry as... Like a hard no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every relationship is different. Yeah, you can make it however you want, call it whatever you want. Right. We're just going to say rules and boundaries. Right. So another good thing is to decide with your partner if you want to practice safe sex with other people. It's usually a big topic in relation, open relationships and can never hurt to just figure out if that's a step that you want to take. Yeah. Another thing to go over, which this isn't a rule or boundary, but decide how much you're going to tell each other. You can decide to you each go play with other people but you don't tell each other anything about it or the details maybe like just hey i'm going to alex's okay and then you come home and talk about work (laughs) (laughs) you don't talk about it that's some people don't want to yeah other people it's they tell you about it first they come home and then they tell you what happened Some people want all the little details. Some people want all the details while they're fucking (laughs) and relive out that thing, that that experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's something to talk about, too, because we talked about that in the beginning, and Zach was more towards, I don't want to know. And me, it was, I want to know. Yeah. It's not an insecurity thing. It's more of just, I want to know. I think it comes from just, I want to know where you are in general, you know, just like as a safety thing that people do. That I understand for sure. Hey, I'm going this place, I'm going this place, but I don't know, I just specifically want to know if it's, you're going to see a girl. I just want to know. Why, so you can masturbate to the thought of it? Yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, I don't know. Well, because then I'm sitting there, instead of wondering... Is he with a girl? Is he not? I'm sitting there wondering, are they doing it yet? See, it's like exciting for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's more like, I want to know where you are just to make sure that you're safe and that you're not in any bad situation that you might not be able to get out of. Um, But as far as like the details of the sex and everything, I just don't really care enough to really get into that. You know what I mean? I want the details when you get home. Yeah, we're much different in that regard. (laughs) Yeah, so for us, we are on opposite ends of it. I guess it's not compromising, but it's going with what the person who needs something to be more comfortable with, it's going with that. Does that make sense? Like, I need that to feel just more comfortable and better about the situation. I feel like in this situation, it should go to me. To what I'm wanting because I need that more than you need to not know. Oh yeah, that's definitely true. It affects your feelings much more than it affects my feelings, so I compromise to your side of the spectrum, I would say. 
Yeah, and I compromise by not giving the details. Right. So really, I guess, I mean, the last guideline I would say would just be to talk through things as you experience them. Every situation is going to be different, and every relationship is going to be different, and one person might be comfortable, let's say, for example, oral, and the other person might not be comfortable. And it's important to note that your rules and stuff might change as well as you go on. Right. The same with swinging. Yeah, I mean, as people... Evolve. Evolve, people age and grow differently and feel things differently and yeah you might not like something at first and then you're like oh you know what i do like this we should do that yeah exactly for example i used to hate brussels sprouts now i fucking love them that's not a good example that's not (laughs) i love brussels sprouts what do you want from me that is not on subject (laughs) now i'm hungry great (laughs) oh my gosh but yeah it's basically very similar to starting to swing all of this the only difference is what the conversations are about Okay, next, we kind of want to dig a little deeper into the different types of boundaries that you have. So, sexual boundaries, you know, what acts are you and aren't you okay with, all of that. And then there's emotional boundaries, you know, talk about what make, would make you jealous and how to approach each other if you do get jealous Because jealousy is something that's definitely going to come up at some point whenever you're starting out. Because you're not sure exactly how you'll feel until something happens. Mm -hmm. You can't be 100% sure. And you should also talk about what should happen if you start developing feelings for someone. And that's something that's not allowed. Mm -hmm. Because that's something that can definitely happen. Yeah, that's a perfectly natural thing. I mean... If you're being intimate with someone, even if it's not, like, making love. I mean, if you're fucking someone, you're sharing pheromones and endorphins together and all the fucking science shit. So, developing, like, a little crush on somebody is perfectly natural. Yeah. Another one is your personal boundaries. Am I allowed to sleep with your friends or your coworkers? Are you allowed to sleep with your ex-girlfriends? Are we allowed to sleep with strangers? That's important, too, to go over, is who you're allowed to have these external relationships with. Also, you can discuss what other genders you're allowed to play with. For example, let's say it's a heterosexual couple, and the girl wants to explore her bisexual side with another girl, but the husband is not comfortable with that. That's a discussion to have. The last thing is time. So splitting your time between with your partner or with your family versus the other people that you're going to be seeing or hooking up with. So you need to set those guidelines on how much time is okay to spend with other people and when it's okay to cut into your time with your partner. So is this is it okay for me to see someone once a week? Are we doing this once a month? You know, and this also depends on if you're having, like, quote, a girlfriend or a boyfriend versus just hooking up with random people. Or, like, if you have, like, a fuck buddy or something like that. Yeah. That kind of makes it different. That was something that I don't even think we talked about early on. We kind of just got to that point, and then once you found somebody... We discussed what we what I was comfortable with. Yeah. How many times like you saw him? Because I think in the beginning, whenever I was with a, nif- a different girl, you didn't really have like a limit on how often I would hang out with her or anything like that. But also, I would only see her once every a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. So you weren't trying to see her a lot. So right. It was fine. But yeah, whenever I was gonna see Devin regularly, which didn't happen. Um, you said you were okay with once every other week? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, you were comfortable with that? Yeah, just because I very much cherish our time together. And since I work a good amount, you know, we don't get a ton of time to each other. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I understand that. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather spend that time with someone else, but. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, so I'm just compromising, really. Oh, really? Really. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, you're right. All right, now, let's get into some pros and cons. Pros and cons. Pro. It's the best. It's the best. Cons. There aren't any. <laughs> Episode over. <laughs> So let's start with the pros. Just like swinging, it heightens your communication about what you want and what you need in your relationship and in your sex life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are very scared to talk about their needs and their desires with their partner because they're so afraid that their partner might be upset at how they feel. Yeah, so this opens the communication up more and just communication in general. Right. And it also deepens your trust with each other yeah, by far. Big time. Yeah, because you have to have a lot of trust. Yeah, I would say it also enhances your emotional connection with your partner. Being allowed to be physical with other people only makes your emotional connection with your partner that much deeper. That's how it is for me and Sarah. Now, some people might say that being able to be emotional with other people enhances their emotional bond with their partner. If that's how you do it, then that's awesome and good for you. But either way, it's going to enhance your emotional connection with your partner. Oh, yeah. When I have sex with someone and I come home, I'm like, B. And I jump on him. And I give him all the kisses. Yep. And then I push her off and tell her to go fuck herself. And then I fuck myself. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) It's also nice, like, not feeling tied down. That's something that I struggle with for a long time in relationships like I just always felt like very restricted and being in an open relationship it helps you feel more free and more like liberated yeah for sure and you get to pursue like new experiences and stuff with new people and be able like for me personally I love flirting and that sexual tension and all of that stuff so it lets me still have that surface level crap but also have our deep connection right yeah we're both big flirts honestly it's just our personality really except as a couple as we've already said before we're not good at flirting as a couple god we suck as at flirting as a couple all right let's get back on topic another pro is if you feel compersion this is another opportunity to feel compersion. Like Zach said, I want him to tell me all the details. And it makes me happy for him. And it makes me a little horny. <laughs> Win-win. A little. Another good one that I feel is an issue later on in your relationship or your marriage that happens over time is that, you know, you might feel like your partner isn't fulfilling your sexual needs or your emotional needs and your all of that, it's impossible for someone to give you all of that all the time for 50 years. I don't know if it's impossible, but I would say it's very unrealistic. Okay, yeah, that's you that's know, a better word. Every once in a while you'll meet grandpa and grandma who've been together for 81 years. And well, you don't know if their sexual like relationship has been off or not. That's true. This is a good point. I yeah. just go off what they say and they're like, I would never trade it for a second. You know? Yeah, so this gives you the opportunity to have your needs filled by other people, whether it be just sexual or emotional needs or interests. And lastly, it makes it very unlikely that your partner will cheat on you. Now, personally, I see absolutely no fucking reason to cheat on your partner while you have an open relationship but there always is those people that that end up doing it yeah so i mean it's not this isn't something that makes it impossible to cheat it just minimizes it by a lot because that person should be getting their sexual and emotional needs filled so right yeah i would say it's probably very rare in open relationships to get cheated on But anything's possible. Alright, so there are probably many other pros that we just can't think of. 
But that's what we have for you guys for pros. Now, let's get into the cons. Because there certainly are some cons. And I feel like we wouldn't be doing it justice if we only went over the pros. Yeah. So let's go over some of the cons. Obviously, there's a risk of jealousy and issues with your own self-esteem. Jealousy is a perfectly natural feeling. And most people had to like train themselves to not feel it. Yeah. And generally, that's only early on in open relationships. But definitely, it's still a possibility. Yeah. Another one, which I would say is a big one, is there is a risk of it causing issues in your relationship. I mean, unfortunately, that's true. This is something that can really bring you together and make your relationship stronger. But if you do it the wrong way and you don't follow your rules and stuff, it can really lead to arguing and fighting and eventually breaking up or divorcing. I mean... Yeah. I feel like that's a lot more unlikely to happen, but there is the risk. Yeah, it's like there's less issues, but those issues are kind of magnified almost. Yeah. Since there's fewer of them. Like, if if you've been keeping up with us and listening to every episode of our podcast, you know that that's something that we've already experienced, was an accidental crossing of a boundary happened, and it wasn't good. Yeah. It was very bad, and it almost resulted... In Um, death. In death. (laughs) In the death of love. No, but... There's also, just like swinging, the risk of STDs in unplanned pregnancies. That's why you really gotta be safe and be fixed. (laughs) (laughs) Fixed. Neutered. Neutered. Be on some form of birth control or whatever, because unfortunately that is a risk. Yeah, but that's why we went over the whole safe sex thing because, I mean, obviously you don't want any STDs or anything like that, but imagine giving your partner something that you got. I mean, you just feel like a horrible person, right? Especially if it's something untreatable. Right. That would be pretty catastrophic. Yeah. This next one is something that we recently have come across. There is the chance that your relationship feels lopsided as in one person is getting more than the other person (laughs) so whenever i went out and found a guy that i was gonna start seeing regularly Devin, zach was kind of like well shit i need a girl to see regularly bingo it felt kind of uneven for him not that it's not fair It's not like we have to be at the same level every time, but it kind of gives you that, aw, like FOMO. Yeah, FOMO, yeah, (laughs) exactly. That fear of missing out. Yeah, it's just that, not jealous, but... No, not jealous at all, just... You just want some too. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're happy for your partner, but you're like, hey, what about me? Yeah, it's like that childish instinct. Yeah, exactly. She got a new Barbie, I want a new Barbie too. That I can fuck. Okay. Chill, Ken. (laughs) Now, just like with the chance that someone could cheat in an open relationship, there's also the risk of your partner falling in love and leaving you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's very, very unlikely, and, and I'm assuming hardly ever happens but there is always that risk i mean any type of relationship or marriage or whatever you'll be in there is always that risk of someone leaving you so i mean this isn't necessarily a con relating to open relationships i guess it's more of just but i think like in an open relationship i mean you're still you're meeting new people and you're you have the opportunity more often than a regular relationship to get feelings for somebody yeah you know what i mean that's true. Since you're experiencing all these new things with new people, it can be exciting and you can kind of start following that yeah, that feeling, you know, and get kind of carried away. Yeah. Like when people come across, the grass is always greener. Yeah. 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 So you just got to be a little bit careful with that. Now don't let that scare you. That's very unlikely. Yeah. And you should... Trust your relationship enough to even start an open relationships. That shouldn't even be a worry. Like, I know for damn sure that would never happen between us. 
Yeah. Don't give me right. that. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. That's my B. I want nobody else. I'm your B for life. All right, relax. Maybe for like a couple more years. I don't know if we ever talked about this, but me and Zach call each other B. I think we've said it. We've called each other B a couple times on the podcast. But I don't think we ever acknowledged it. Yeah, maybe not. So yeah, we call each other B, if you haven't noticed. It doesn't really mean anything. It just... Yeah, I like when people ask me, they're like, aw, what does B stand for, babe? And I'll say, no, it stands for bitch. Yeah, it stands, <laughs> for, stands for bacon. Because I just want to eat her. You ruined my joke with your shitty joke. Your shitty joke was made better by my joke. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking fucker. <laughs> it doesn't stand for anything. We're just freaking dum-dums. Now, back on track. To wrap it all up, before you yourself even consider getting in an open relationship or asking your partner about it, there's things you need to consider. There's things that you need to ask yourself. You know, you really need to dive into yourself and see if you're really capable of it, if you're ready for it. Because it's not for everybody. Just like swinging, not everybody is actually capable yeah, absolutely. I mean, personally, I think anybody could be capable of and work towards it, but I know that's not realistic. But anyways, some things you need to ask yourself is what are the benefits of an open relationship for you? What's the benefits for your relationship? Will you be able to emotionally deal with the idea that your partner is with someone else? Are you actually capable of that? Right. Or, like, how will I react if my partner develops feelings for somebody else? Yeah, well, if that does happen, is it going to completely crush you? Yeah. Is that a risk you're even willing to take? Right. And you also need to ask yourself if your partner will respect your wishes. I mean, you should know your partner better than anybody else, right? So, if you don't think that they can follow your rules or boundaries or whatever, then maybe it's not for you guys. Yeah, and we went over the cons of an open relationship, so you really got to ask yourself, are you okay with the risks involved? You know, you can't pick and choose, they're all there, and are you okay with taking those risks? Yeah. So that basically sums it all up. Now, with our open relationship, looking at the big picture, I would say it's definitely been something beneficial Definitely something I would recommend to someone that's capable of it. I've definitely loved it. I've loved the experience. It hasn't been completely easy. There were some speed bumps to get over. But Mm -hmm. I love it. I love the idea of it, too. Just the fact that I'm able to do something if I want to. I hardly ever feel the need to go sleep with someone else. It's normally if I'm out drinking and there's some guy... When we're, like, making eye contact, and then there's, like, sexual tension. <laughs> That's more of the only time I feel it. Yeah. But I love the option being there. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Honestly, the option is, like, what's important to me. Just to have the freedom of being able to do what I want and know that it's not going to hurt you in any way. Mm-hmm. It's very, very, like, liberating, honestly. It's really a good way to put it because... In past relationships, I just felt so binded and constricted by these norms that were put on relationships. And I was so unhappy in those relationships, but not this one. This one, I'm very, very happy. And I'm very glad that we did it. And honestly, it really wasn't that hard for us to kind of to do it. I mean, we talked about it on our first date because we're just those kind of people. So we really just clicked and fit together like a puzzle piece and... You know, even though we're still putting together that puzzle and we're never going to stop putting together that puzzle. And sometimes we get some pieces wrong. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. I wouldn't want to put together that puzzle with anybody else. Aww. All right, fuck off. I'm smiling. And I'm rolling my eyes. (laughs) (laughs) That was sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And if you guys, anyone who's listening to this, 
if you are thinking about starting an open relationship or making your current relationship an open relationship and you need some advice or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. I mean, we are always open to talking to people and just giving our perspective and that's sometimes that's all you need is just a different perspective. Yeah, and I mean, we're not professionals or anything by any means. Certainly not. But sometimes just having an outside look at things can really help. Yep. So yeah, definitely reach out to us. I would love to help people. That would satisfy me. That would satisfy my needs. Okay. (laughs) But yeah, so you'll probably notice... It's pretty similar to swinging, and that's why we called it swinging stepsister. It's because it's very similar to swinging, but not exactly. Well, any last words? Any advice about open relationships? Take your time. Figure it out. You're not going to know all the answers at first. But as you go along, you'll find out what you want. And you'll find out what you need. And it really can blossom into a really great thing. That was a way better answer than I thought you were going to give. Yeah. <laughs> I'm full of surprises. Okay. Now, we have a big, not announcement, a big idea. Not sure what to call it. But we thought of possibly doing, I guess you could call them mini episodes, maybe like once a month or something, and have people send in their swinger stories for us to read. Kind of like the Fresh Forms, but different. It can be just any story, not just about your first time. But we realized we're not always going to have fresh updates with sexy stories to tell realistically it's just not possible for us so this would be a chance to still give y'all some good stories and for y'all to share yours because i know if you're a swinger you at least have one good story whether it's a funny story a bad story a really hot story or or anything in between yeah anything in between So, we would do an episode just reading those stories. And if you've ever listened to a true crime podcast, they kind of do that. That's where I got the idea from. It's when people send in their own stories of stuff that happened in their life. Yeah, we thought this would be a really cool thing to do, but we want y'all's opinion on it. I made a little uh, Google form thing that I'll put in the show notes that you can click on. And basically, just give us your opinion on it. If you think we should do it or not. Or if you have any suggestions or anything. Or whatever. Because we don't want to do something that there's no point in doing. We like the idea. We want to do it. The only thing we're worried about is if there's going to be participation. (laughs) Because we need y'all to send in stories for us to do it. Yeah, we know you guys have some saucy, saucy stories out there. Oh, yes. So please, send them in if we end up doing this. I was about to say, yeah, don't send them in yet. Yeah. So yeah, we're still deciding. But if we do do it, we want to hear from you. Yes. Plus, it's an easy episode to record, so we'd be able to get an episode out as well and not miss three weeks in a row. Yeah. (laughs) And at the end of the day, it just means more content for you guys. Yeah. So, win-win. So yeah, like I said in the show notes, just click the little link and just, you don't have to put your name or email or anything. Just type in your opinion or suggestions or anything. And now for a fresh update. So we met a couple for dinner and we had talked to them off and on since like November, I think. And right now it's June. So... (laughs) been a while we were moving and then they got busy and then we got busy and then they moved Mm -hmm. so it's been off and on but we finally reconnected and 
Damn near seven months in the making. Yeah, and finally picked a time to meet. So we met them at a restaurant. They got there before us. We were a couple minutes late. Shocking. I wonder why. I'm a late person, okay? I'm always five to ten minutes late everywhere, and I try so hard not to be, but I can't help it. I'm pretty sure you've said this in, like, half of our episodes. Well, I'm always late. <laughs> but anyways, we walk in, and we think we see them. We have that awkward, is that them? I'm not sure. Do we sit down? I don't know. Then you make eye contact, and then we realize, okay, yeah, it is them. So we sit down with them, and we begin to have a few drinks and whatnot, and we're all socially drinking and just talking and kind of hitting it off, and honestly, the night went really well. It was pretty funny because this whole dynamic that me and Sarah have of, like, me being a child and her taking care of me and me being helpless and whatever, it's, like, all funny and whatever, but they have the same exact dynamic. And so the whole night, Sarah was just rolling her eyes at me, and the woman was just rolling her eyes at her husband, and, like, her and Sarah were, like, bonding over how similar me and the other guy was. We weren't, like, talking about it bonding, but it was more of, like, we could tell each other was both, like, behave. (laughs) Yeah, like, come on, these are people we could potentially have sex with, so put on your best behavior. Yeah, and we didn't even say the best part. When we sit down and say hi and stuff, about his second sentence, he brings up, Oh, we di- I didn't roof you or anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally like not even 45 seconds into us sitting down. We we're already talking about roofies. We we're like, all right, these are our kind of people. <laughs> yeah. Like if you know us, we just joke around about anything and everything. And it was nice to kind of like relieve some of that tension that, okay, we can kind of be ourselves and joke around. And Yeah, but her face was like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> don't she's, say that. Yeah, she seemed like worried that he said that. <laughs> Which is understandable, because it's like, what if we weren't those kind of people, and we like yeah. found that offensive or some shit? Yeah, but he was like... He just didn't give a fuck, which I respected. Yeah, the conversations went well. I would say he led most of the conversation. Yeah, for sure. It was very chill. I wouldn't say there was much flirting or anything. No, not at all. It was very much a get-to-know-you, talking about our experiences, and... Yeah, within the lifestyle, and... All those things. And uh, they brought it up um, casually, like nonchalantly, I guess, that they don't fuck on the first date. So we kind of were... Relieved. Yeah, a little bit relieved. like Because we weren't really planning to. Zach, for some reason, broke out in hives on his stomach from work. I didn't shave at all anywhere. (laughs) Yeah, it was... We were a mess, honestly. So that Where was... did those fucking hives come from? I'm still so confused about that. I don't know. I'm only allergic to penicillin. Like, how did somebody fucking rub me with penicillin? Probably. I don't understand how it could did happen. Did someone hug you? Because it was on this your sides. Maybe. So maybe someone's trying to kill you. <laughs> maybe, honestly. Maybe it was a fucking assassination attempt. Maybe it was a different podcast. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> podcast competition. Us versus the rotten pineapples. (laughs) The rotten pineapples. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But the day went well. It was fun. They honestly, I mean, the woman was pretty attractive. Would you say the guy was attractive? Yeah, I would say he's like generally attractive, but his personality makes him even more attractive. Oh, and he was like six feet tall. So he was definitely like a man child. He was 6'3. Six 6'3? Three. Six three? Yeah, he's a big dude. Like, I'm 5'10 and a half on a good day. He was tall. Like, I have no depth perception, so I can't really tell height with people, but he was tall. Yeah. Even I could tell. For sure. 6'3 is pretty big, honestly. And you know what that probably means? Big feet. Which means? Big socks. Which means? Big dick. Chinary. Because he likes to read. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, he's probably packing heat down there. If we're being real. I know. I'm scared. I know. But anyways, back on 
to Back the on story. Track. Um, yeah, there wasn't really anything notable to bring up that we talked about. It was just a casual meetup. Yeah. And yeah. but we all really liked each other, honestly. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, they even messaged us afterwards. Why can't <laughs> I fucking talk? They even messaged us afterwards and you know, thanked us for hanging out and said they had a good time and all that stuff and that they want to hang out again soon. Yeah. And we do too. So hopefully we can hang out with them again soon and we'll have a a real fresh update for you guys yes. sometime in the near future. Spicy one. Spicy. Yeah. Well, we're going out of town for a week, going back home. Yeah. For a wedding, so. Your stupid sister. Hey. Stupid. Idiot, stupid, dumb. I'm gonna have her listen to the podcast just so she. No, hears you're that. fucking not. No, I'm not. She That'd wouldn't. Be awkward. She wouldn't like this podcast. No, she would not. <laughs> but, anyways. Yeah, we'll keep you guys posted on that. We're, you know, somewhat excited. You know, should be some good potential in this swap. So, we'll let you guys know what happens. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, on to the next thing. We have two forms to read, and they're actually both sent in by Pascal Alex Warren. And I just want to say shout out to him. He made a really nice tweet about me last week, and it made my day. Aww. Let's read the starting the lifestyle form first. Okay, so the form asks... What was your biggest worry or hesitation? And he said, jealousy. How did you learn about the lifestyle? He said, internet curiosity slash hearing about trapeze since I lived in the Atlanta area for a while. Trapeze is a swingers club. Oh, nice. Did you create rules or boundaries or dive right in? Looking for the right partner to swing with. Then we'll set boundaries before diving in the laughing face. Good thinking. Yeah, I guess you need another person before you can start. Yeah. Was your first experience good or bad? Tell your story. Still in my future, and hopefully it will be a great experience. Well, you can tell your story once you experience it. Yeah. Anything else you'd like us to know slash say? He says he's a 45 male, interested in the lifestyle, but have not found the right partner, and just came out of a 25-year relationship. Ooh, 25 years. oof It's almost as old as I am. Well, if anybody is interested in a 45 male, go find him somehow. (laughs) Yeah, how are they going to find him? What do you mean? (laughs) So, his next form is the lifestyle experience form. And it asks, what is the most important thing every couple should know? He says, trust and honesty, even though I have to be honest and say sometimes it's easier said than done. I mean, it can be hard to trust if you haven't built it up. Mm-hmm. What should a couple do if they don't agree on something? Not move forward with it after discussing and not being on the same page. That's true. Oh, yeah. You got to figure it out before you do it. What was your biggest mistake? Lying. Not being truthful about past relationships and cheating. Yeah. That'll do it. Lying is... The devil's... Nectar. Nectar, yeah. (laughs) I didn't know where I was going with that. (laughs) What's the best thing that happened to you in the lifestyle? Hopefully an honest, open, and respectful relationship. Well, Alex, we really hope you find the partner you're looking for. Yeah, and hopefully it'll be an honest, open, and respectful relationship. We wish you the best, Alex. Thank you for sending in the forms. We appreciate it immensely. Yes, and thank you for being a fresh fan and an OnlyFan. Is that how you call an OnlyFan subscriber? An OnlyFan? I don't think so. I don't know. An OnlyFanzers? OnlyFanz? A subscriber to our OnlyFans. A subscriber to our OnlyFans. Okay, that makes more sense. That's all for this episode. Now, next episode which we told y'all last time is what this episode was going to be, but then we changed our mind. But next episode, we will have a professional come on 
that we're interviewing. And we're going to be talking about the importance of pleasure and other things. Pleasure. And how important sex is. A.K.A. how important swinging is. Yeah, that'll be a really good episode, honestly. I mean, having like a professional come on that's been on talk shows and podcasts and who's like a doctor in the field. That'd be really cool to pick her brain and hear what she has to say about everything. For sure. So that'll be next episode. And oh, I almost forgot. So I was wanting to try something CBD because I never have before. And with my brain, that went to, let me see if there's any CBD lube. So I got one to try it out. And it's from a brand called Foria. And I freaking love it. I normally don't even use lube when I masturbate. But now I use it every single time. Because, I don't know, it just like, it gives me this like warm feeling after. Like not warm temperature but a warm feeling, and I don't know, I like it. It, like, feels better. I don't know how to describe it, really. We tried it once with sex. I couldn't really tell that much of a difference, but they also have these, like, lube suppositories that you can try. We just haven't tried them yet to keep forgetting. But, yeah, the company is all natural. The lube that I got, it's actually technically sex oil but it's all natural cocoa oil and cbd and the good thing and the reason i was looking for a different lube too is because i don't really like how the water-based one feels and obviously you can't use silicone with toys so this is like a perfect compromise that i found for myself oh yeah and she's been using it non-stop yeah, like I use it literally every time I masturbate now. Which is multiple times a day. Okay, let's not get crazy. You're the one that's getting crazy. <laughs> but anyways, so since I liked it so much, I decided obviously that's something I want to recommend. So I might as well get an affiliate link for it. So yeah, we have an affiliate link for it. So if you're interested in it or the company, because all of their stuff is... CBD and sex stuff and some other stuff and it's all natural there'll be a link in the show notes to it and I'm not gonna lie it's a little bit more pricey because it's CBD and anything with CBD in it is a little bit more expensive but personally it works for me and I love it so just gonna recommend it okay I'm done talking about lube now (laughs) (laughs) and don't forget you can subscribe to our OnlyFans it's only five dollars a month That's like a cup of coffee, and you'll be supporting the show. And don't forget that you can email us at thefreshpineapples at gmail.com. Or you can visit our website, fresh-pineapples.com. And you can follow us on Twitter, freshpineapples with a Z, not an E-S. And you can follow our Instagram. We have an Instagram now? No. (laughs) Okay. I was testing you. Uh Uh-huh. But, yeah, don't forget to follow, like, if you're on Apple, give us a five-star rating that helps more people find us, and a review, and that's it. There's nothing else I can think of to say. The only other thing I can think of would be, fam, 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 fam. God damn it, I thought you were going to forget. You thought I'd forget, you dumb whore. (laughs) That was so close. <laughs> you fucking thought. If you made it this far and you heard that, let us know how much you appreciated it. Oh my gosh, no one does. Everybody hates it. Any... Okay, maybe it's just me that hates it. Yeah. But anyways. Well, we love you guys. We appreciate y'all so much. It means a lot to us that we have people who listen to us and who thinks that we're good at this. Even though we're not. We're, we're figuring it out. Slowly but surely. We'll get there in a few years. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for listening to Fresh Pineapples. Now, fuck off.